Welcome to Tech Talks. Um, I have Onyeka of Farm Crowdy here today, who is, you know, in the food business. You now we talk about technology, we talk about, you know, infrastructure, oil and gas. But if you don't have food in Nigeria, what is going to happen? And I think uh, really what Onyeka is doing is uh, connecting people on markets in the agricultural space. But he's here to tell us exactly how he does that and why he went into it. So, um, Onyeka, I know you're not a farmer. So, <laughs> what drew you into uh, starting on Farm Crowdy? Okay. Um, first, thanks for the opportunity. Um, in 2015, I was at that time launching um, a business, um, a travel focused business. And I've pretty much had my own time working with a couple of other companies prior to that, um, some of the biggest e commerce companies in, in the country. And while working there, I noticed that there are three big problems that I could take advantage of technology to solve. With my background in technology and uh, programming and marketing, and then setting up businesses, I wanted to see how I could solve these three big problems using technology as a platform. The first was agriculture, the second was real estate, and the third, transportation. So I have focused on these three core yeah. um, um, problem areas. And at the time when I was looking at the, all three of them, I noticed that with the focus of the government on the agriculture space, a lot of people were excited about getting into the agriculture space. People were saying, I want to invest in agriculture, but I don't know a farmer I can trust. I fell into the same category yeah. of people. I want to put my money in a farm, but I don't know which farm I'll give my money to. I'll who carry my money, I'm going to marry a second wife. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> do the work. It, 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 if I do three things that impress me, those three things you mentioned, yeah. real estate, transportation, uh, transportation agriculture. agriculture. That's the problem with agriculture in Nigeria. Right, the farm, real estate, uh, the farm, the, the, the farming, yes. and then the route to market. Yes. Getting into market. Yes. Yeah. And so I just said, okay, how do we then use technology? First of all, the biggest one, agriculture, yeah. across the value chain, but yeah. starting with production. And I found a farmer and said, okay, we're going to put money into his farm. I got a couple of friends, um, one in finance and one in operations. And as we're gathering money to put in his farm, he got back to me and said, um, after a few weeks, I said, I'm looking for a job. I'm like, dude, you're a farmer. <laughs> I'm looking for a job. And he said, um, the problem is that if only if we get the money to him now, he won't be able to farm because the planting season has passed. I said, okay, did you speak to the banks? Mm -hmm. And he said, the banks consider me unbankable. Of course. I just said, okay, did you talk to other individuals like me to try to get mm -hmm. the same money? And he said, yeah, but they don't really trust me or even they don't know whether I'll get them the updates mm -hmm. they require. And I then discovered 38 million people fall into the category of small-scale farmers in Nigeria that fits this guy's category. People that are unbankable, don't know smart farming techniques, and at the same time, don't know the markets to sell their farm produce, even if they solve the first two problems. So I decided to come up with um, the platform called Farm Crowdy because there were people on the other side like me that wanted to invest, but didn't know the farmers to work with. And so Farm Crowdy is a, is a marketplace, pretty much, a connection point between sponsors or people that are interested in the agriculture space to go through us as a platform and invest in the farmers. We hold the farmers accountable to make sure they deliver on the mandate that they've been told to deliver on. So we get pre-arranged markets for them to sell their harvest. We train them on smart farming techniques. We lease the extra land that they wouldn't have taken advantage of brought to farm crowd coming on board. And so they can make more money. What we're helping the farmers do is now um, earn a decent living from farming as a business. And that's what how Farm Crowd came into being. I mean, we launched, we went live September 14th last year. We yeah. launched effectively November 14th last year. In the last 12 months, we've worked with more than 2,000 small scale farmers, growing their income by an average of 80%. We're currently in eight states in Nigeria. Yeah. Um, we have a combination of over 1,000. 1,800 to 2,000 farmers, direct farmers we've worked with. But when you work with one female farmer, you're affecting her family. Yeah. So I can say we have categorically about 4,000 indirect farmers mm -hmm. we're currently working with. And um, we currently do stuff like rice, maize, cassava. We've grown over... I have cassava. In fact, I'm investing in cassava. <laughs> I don't know, how long is cassava again? Cassava can, do, can start from... Nine to twelve months. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think I have nine months. I think I have a few months to go before. Oh. I'm gonna have it. So I invested in yes. I invested in that. Oh, cassava. fantastic. Yeah. So, I mean, okay. So I get my. So I get my. I get my. I get my. Um, Your updates. updates. I get my updates. Bi weekly basis. Yeah, by, fantastic. No, no, by, yeah. I think by weekly or by monthly. Yeah, by okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Them, yeah, so. yeah. So what we do now is provide those updates so that 
beyond you as a sponsor, there are people that may be skeptical and yeah. want don't want to put their money. Yeah. What we do is now make two entry points. You can come in as a sponsor, or you can also come in as a follower. Okay. And as a farm follower, you'll get the same updates, pictures, videos, updates okay. about the farm, but you can't visit the farmer and you're not expecting a return. Yeah. But what it does is that it's now informing people about making better decisions yeah. about investing in agriculture yeah. over time. And what we see is 10% of these people eventually convert into becoming farm sponsors over time. So let me ask a question. So it's like a chicken and egg thing. So you have, as, you, as you're growing credibility on the production side and more farmers are seeing what you're doing for them and more are coming on. How are you dealing with the investment? Because you also need investment to, to um, be able to more people to come on board. So yes. are you marketing, managing both the the, the, the supply side okay. and the demand side? What has happened is um, when we first started, it, people were a bit skeptical about the platform. So it took us, we had a poultry farmer that was doing 550 chicks and she wanted to grow it on the pen that her mother passed on to her. But the problem was that because we were new, people didn't really trust us at that point in time. So um, it took us maybe six weeks to get to sponsors to sponsor that farm. But what has happened recently is that we had a farm in July with 25,000 chicks to raise to become chickens. We sold out in eight minutes. We generated close to $70,000 in eight minutes, 30 seconds. It's a rebuttal because, in fact, I, 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 I don't like cassava. Not that much. But I think what I want to invest in, I wasn't quite sure. I said, I'll come back again. And I, okay, then, I, then I wanted to get you on the show. So I said, let me invest in something. Else. Okay. Everything had gone except for that period. Except it was only cassava. Only cassava that was left. So chicken sells out fast yes. because people's chicken, appetite yeah. is slower. Yeah. Now, the way we get sponsors is every time a sponsor comes on the platform, one sponsor comes on the platform and sponsors a particular farm, he has opened up the opportunity for a farmer to go up the value chain, to, to, to increase his income. But beyond that, we also take them to the farms to meet the farmers. So there's an emotional attachment yeah. beyond impact, beyond return is the impact that yeah. they are creating in the farmer's life. What happens is after those farm visits, they go back and next time they want to sponsor, they do five times the original sponsorship they did. Beyond that, they tell 20 other people. So yeah. we've been growing gradually with very little marketing getting more sponsors on board but beyond that our current sponsors return on an average of 80 percent every time we do a new cycle of course we're just going back here exactly the return mm -hmm. but beyond that the impact they see yeah. so this has helped us scale our operations we sell out our farms really fast um just within our sponsors which we're trying to grow the base yeah. and that's why we launched our mobile app, um three days ago okay if i on, on um on Android and Store, Android too, okay. yeah, it's going to come out on iOS and Windows next week. Yeah. The mobile app is now to increase our follower base. Yeah. And increasing our follower base, ten percent keep converting to become the sponsors. That is our marketing tool. What the size of farms that you have now in eight states? What's the what's the uh, what's the target in twenty uh, and only a year? Only yeah, a year. Only a year. Old. Only a year. Old. What's your target for, 20, for the end of 2018? 2018. How many investors do you have? What's your investor base right now? Okay, our target for 2018 first is to see how we can get 5,000 new farmers empowered. 5,000 new farmers empowered um, within 2018. Um, we sit around figures of 4,000 to 5,000. We already have on our waiting list over 3,000 farmers for next year. So in getting those guys empowered, the first part we need to do is to get the market to sell whatever they produce. So we're building relationships with pre-arranged buyers, with um, off-takers, we call them in the agri space, mm -hmm. that will buy up what these farmers will produce. Once they sign up contracts with us to buy that up, we'll make available the units for these farmers to be sponsored and then we engage them. That's the first target. The second thing is that Farm Proud is a community model. Oh, hold on, please, sir. Okay. This is getting really exciting for okay. me. It's very, very complex. How do you, so like, I see exposure. So how do you fix, do you fix prices? No. To, or do you wait for, do you, so is price dependent on the output? The you end? can get an LPO okay. from um, an optical that says, I want 20, 20 tons of cassava within this period yeah. at this price. Okay. That helps us. Okay, that, exactly. So, so that's you a big made, price. Exactly. You know, you you know what you're working towards. 
but there are also markets that will leave it open for what the seasonal price yeah. will be. Yeah. At that point in time, you can play around the margins by buying up the harvest okay. and then warehousing yeah. it and waiting for where the market has, the glut in the market has yeah. reduced and then you sell at a higher margin. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of treasury operations required around this, it's not just yes. market, it's not just um, There's a lot of work financial. beyond the website. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So, speaking around the targets, Farm Crowdy is a community model. Yeah. And the way we've built it is we've created a platform for Nigerians to sponsor Nigerian farmers, produce Nigerian food for Nigerians to eat. Yeah. Eventually, in scaling that model, we will look at Ghanaians doing the same thing. We'll look at Kenyans doing the same thing. But we want to focus on Nigeria in 2018, preparing our minds for what will happen in Ghana and Kenya and Rwanda within the last quarter of next year. So for us in Nigeria, we our target is to reach 20, 20 states by the end of 2018. And we've done eight states this year. Um, our team size is around 25. It's going to expand a bit more to get more experts, agronomists, okay. technology people on board. Okay. And so this, these are our humble targets yeah. for uh, next year. Humble, <laughs> humble, humble, humbly audacious <laughs> targets. So uh, for a one-year-old company, uh, uh, which, is, which, is, uh, which is amazing. So data must... So, no, data. Data and technology must play big role. First of all, you're collecting a lot of data because you're yes. yes. So, so first question, how is technology playing a role? And you just mentioned you're going to want to acquire to get some more technology yeah. and um, science around it. How is technology playing a role? And what kind of data are you getting? And what kind of data are you using to feed into making your decisions and allocating resources? Yeah. Um, we're still far behind when it comes to smart farming techniques in Nigeria. and. Outside Nigeria, um, artificial intelligence is doing great stuff with kind of smart farm techniques. I mean, now you can almost put a server in a farm and it tells you the topography level, it tells you the water level in soil, tells you what's going on around the plants. We can, I mean, at the moment now, we even, we've started testing it using drones to analyze our farms. So our um, technical field specialists don't have to now walk 10,000 kilometers to get data that they need so we're using drones to get some of those feeds back and it helps us make better decisions on the plant um, we're also building technology around how we manage the farmers so a technical field specialist will be able to have a mobile app that he can talk to the farmers with and advise them and help them through their process without physically being there that will help us reach out to more farmers and so the application of technology to scale the operations in that regard is something else we're also considering Irrigation farming is also another um, um, technology-related, um, hardware, technology hardware-related um, part of farming that we're looking at deploying. We're hoping to get into relationships with government and with other parastatals that would, because it's actually capital intensive. And so irrigation farming allows you to farm in season and out of season. So whether rain is falling or not, you can grow crops on the farm. That helps with food security. That makes sure that whether you're in season or out of season, you have crops and food you're producing. So these applications are some of the easy things mm -hmm. we're doing on the farm. Outside the farm also is that Farm Crowd is going to be pushing the mobile app yeah. to get more enthusiastic people about agriculture to learn, okay, uh, yes. to follow farms, to get excited. I mean, That's this it. is no longer farm view for a game. This yeah. is farm view, farm view in real life. Yeah. So you can yeah. follow a real farm exactly. and then see what's happening in the agriculture space. So okay. that's how we, we want to play around yeah. technology yeah. for us. So using technology to, to change the perception of what agriculture can, yes. what is and what can what it can do for the nation. The yes. so last question. So who are the better farmers, male or female? Who are the better farmers, male or female? <laughs> um, Every time we empower a female farmer, we empower a family. So I'd say in terms of impact, I always prefer when we deal with women farmers. They are more honest. You are when when the money comes to them that they make, the children can go to school, the children can eat. When it's a male farmer, he gets the money, he makes a lot of decisions. And the what goes down back to the farm may not be as much as you will want. As so as much as I I would say, I always prefer when we work with female farmers. I'm excited about what's happening at Aquaibo. We currently have um, 500 acres farmland we're working on Aquaibo with cassava, and we have 600 direct farmers. 300 of them are women, 
And because of those women, they've been able to get indirect farmers of over 1,600 that are in, that are received the impact from the work we're doing. And it all came from those women farmers more. So I think in terms of reach and impact and how our story tells on the lives of the people, I will tilt towards the female farmers more, but I'm open to all farmers. <laughs> okay, that's absolutely a great way to end the show. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming to the show. I'm Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Sir. Thank you.